Artillery is still king of battle in Russia-Ukraine war, but Russian artillery losses jumped sharply. Over the past 29 months, the Russians and Ukrainians have adopted new strategies and used advanced technologies in an attempt to gain a decisive advantage in the ongoing war, Forbes reports. As the war continues to evolve, one particular aspect remains constant. Both sides rely heavily on artillery. Much of the battle damage inflicted so far in the war has been inflicted by artillery, commonly referred to as the king of battle. Indeed, the Russians fire about 10,000 rounds a day, while the Ukrainians fire about 2,000 rounds a day. This reliance on artillery will continue as both Russia and Ukraine develop new tactics and implement new technologies to enhance their firepower, analysts say. Although every modern army uses artillery, Russia and Ukraine adhere to Soviet doctrine, which favors the use of heavy artillery. Russian and Ukrainian military operations focus on placing their artillery systems in key locations that allow them to target their opponents. Proper placement of artillery played a key role in the Ukrainians holding off the initial Russian invasion and the Russians stopping the Ukrainian counter-offensive. Both sides have impressive arsenals of howitzers. Ukraine uses both older Soviet-era equipment such as 2S3 Akatsya and the latest equipment provided by NATO, including the American M109 Paladin, the British AS90 and the French Caesar. Ukraine also produces the 2S22 Bogdana Howitzer domestically, partly funded by foreign aid. Meanwhile, the Russian military has more artillery than any other army in the world, with three times as many artillery pieces as the US military. They use a combination of Soviet-era self-propelled howitzers like the MS-19 MSTAS and newer systems like the 2S33 MSTA SM2. In addition, Russia's defense industrial base has a robust supply chain for producing artillery shells and the production capacity of 250,000 rounds of artillery ammunition per month, allowing them to keep up with the military's deployment rates. Both sides have integrated their artillery with the changing dynamics of the battlefield. But in recent months, the Ukrainian armed forces have significantly increased the rate of destruction of Russian artillery. Russia has a staggering amount of artillery, both at the front and in reserve. Combat losses are quickly compensated for by Soviet-era reserve stockpiles. At the start of the conflict, Russia had about 19,000 pieces of artillery in storage, but many are unusable after decades of rusting in the open air. The big question is the burn rate or the rate at which Russian artillery is destroyed at the front. Unlike tanks and infantry fighting vehicles, which are destroyed at the front line and close to the front, artillery fights from the near rear and its losses are less often captured on film. At the moment, the Oryx project has been able to visually confirm the loss of only 382 towed and 783 self-propelled guns by the Russians. According to OSINT analyst Heimazd, Russia has removed about 1,500 self-propelled guns from storage in addition to the 2,500 that were in service before the war. But instead of having 4,000 on the front lines, they now have only 1,000. Some of the missing 3,000 are still being rebuilt, but most were likely lost in combat, although their destruction cannot be visually confirmed, Forbes writes. According to Forbes, at the previous level of losses, Russian artillery reserves would last until 2025. But if the level of losses continues to grow, then Russia will start having problems with artillery much earlier, possibly as early as the end of the year. Сразу в кусты залег. Он в кустах сразу изначально был. Нет, да я вижу наших, они к кустам идут. Нахуй то втроем идти в чистое поле, блядь. Звезда, блядь. Да. да. 